Okay, folks, I have the Citadel out here, and you know, I was thinking about this, and, uh, you know, we're going to check the chamber on this gun and see if, uh, possibly we just don't have a, uh, a, uh, rough spot in the chamber or something of that area. Uh, let me see if I can get a light. Uh, best way to do it is kind of feel inside the chamber. Although this one feels very smooth, I don't feel any ridges or anything, and I don't see any ridges around the, uh, the outer part of it. But what we're going to do, and then I'll shoot this gun again here, it's pouring the rain today, so it is a rainy day in Kentucky. So what I got here is my, I got a 12 gauge bore brush, and I'm actually going to wrap this in a little bit of this burlap. And on that burlap, I got some Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. Oh, it's pretty dried up. That ain't too bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some of this on this burlap. And we're going to polish this, this chamber and see if that will help this gun any at all as far as it being sticky. Now... They have already said they would replace the gun. So. And uh, hopefully this won't uh, cause any problem with that. So we're going to take. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck this rod up into my drill. And. We're just going to polish that chamber. And see if that does anything at all for this gun. And I'm just going to get this started in there. Probably should have been put on the other way. It's because we're going to be turning that way. We'll see how this goes. She is definitely black. Let's take this rag. Oh, look at that. And look how black that is coming off there. Let's see, I'm going to get this. Oh, my lights flicker. Looks like the electric tried to go out there for a minute. And sorry, should have been a little more prepared right here. Should have had this ready to go. This might help, it might not, but we're going to find out. So we're just going to take this and I'm going to run it through there. Dang, that's tight. That is a 12 gauge rod. Wow. 
Wow. Wow, I had to drive that through. But she is clean. And man, she feels slick in there. So let's uh let's put us a little more polish on there and give that another little uh little swabbing or a little another little polish. I mean it can't hurt it and not do nothing but make it smoother. So let's apply us a little more polish to our brush here. You know, it wouldn't hurt to do this to all my shotguns, especially the the less expensive turkey shotguns. I mean, polishing your chamber is never going to hurt anything. It's just going to make your gun eject better. So, we've got our brush loaded up there with some more polishing compound. We're just gonna You see the black that come out of that thing? Yes, it is definitely polishing that. Look how much more shiny that is. Although I don't want to do around my lug a whole lot there. That cylinder's as smooth as glass now. I can rub my finger up in there all the way around. It is it is silky glass smooth so let's uh, let's clean it up here uh, take a little CLP and get this white polish off of it I'll run my boar snake through it now and uh, clean it with the boar snake That'll get the last of the uh, the polish out. I'm just curious to see as if, if this would even help a guy. You know, it might just be that it had a sticky chamber and it just needed some, uh, some polishing. Like I said, it couldn't hurt it. And this may be something I do to all my shotguns. Just uh, give them a, a good polishing. So I've run my boar snake through there with my CLP. We'll run it through one more time. We'll put some CLP on these brushes here. Get 
them started in there. Then I'm gonna put some CLP here on this end. Just One last time through with the CLP. All right. Let's get us a rag up here, clean one. And wipe this polish off. can't see what I'm doing. I'm just wiping the polish off the outside of the barrel. All right. I pulled my boat carrier out. So right here is what, if you look at your, these little angles right here is what actuate your uh, it's shell interrupter so as this is moving backward this this contacts your shell interrupter and on this side this contacts your shell stop so these little these little notches right here are what in it that uh, actually makes your gun work as far as when it gets back to here if I'm if I'm showing the right side let's see uh, let me show you this goes in and your shell interrupter is on this side and so you can see it actually move down there so when this comes back and then as it goes back it releases the oh, the hammers up so So the hammer's cocked. Now, th this is where it would normally sit. If I had the trigger group out, you could see it better. But as this comes back, it contacts the shell interrupter. So, It contacts the the sh shell catch which is on this side over here and it actually pushes it back let's see if I can demonstrate it it gets pushed back releasing a shell and then your shell interrupter gets pushed inward and that uh, hold your next round in the tube until your other one came out so it's kind of a timing thing you know your shell stops over here it stops your round that's when you load the chamber that's what holds your round in the chamber and then on this side you have your shell interrupter which is another bar that sticks out into the magazine tube that actually catches ahead of the next round before it can shoot out into the magazine itself too I don't know if that explanation helped any or not. But what we are going to do is I am actually going to take uh, a little bit. We're going to do a little bit on this, uh, this action bar too. Well, that just threaded that off, so it can't go backwards. Tell you what, that's used. It'd be more like a buffing wheel anyway. Let's go with this. And a little bit of mothers. 
and we're just going to give this a a quick polish this whole thing down through here made a big difference look at this side and then look at this side so give that a little bit of a polish and let's do the same thing on this side this off and kind of see what we got oh yeah much better slick Alright, I think that's sufficient. So we're going to wipe all this polish off. Get all that off. Look how much shinier that is. Just that little bit right there. Look how much better that looks. So, let's put some CLP on it. Get that polish off. Rubber down here with some CLP. Clean it good. Look how much look how much shinier that is. Theoretically this should work smoother. So we've got our barrel done, we've polished our chamber, we polished a little bit here on this top edge, we polished our chamber, and we polished our action bar. So let's, uh, let's 
reinsert our action bar here. Just reset our bolt on it. We're not doing anything to the bolt. Wipe it off. Maybe put a little CLP on it here in its moving areas. Not a lot, just a little. Reinstall our bolt. Get our gun back. And we're going to reinstall our barrel. Let's see if I can find my end cap. All right. All right, let me move some of this stuff out of the way and then we're gonna, we're gonna look at it here. Let me clean up a little bit here. And then we're gonna try cycling some rounds to it. We're not gonna shoot it because it's pouring the rain out. I don't know if you can hear that out there, but it is absolutely a downpour. So, well, the action does seem smoother. Let's get, I just so happen to have a hundred round box of a shell sitting here. I thought I had some already open. Now that's all right. We're just, we're going to see if we get any double feeds just by racking it. The gun is on safe. So we will be handling a loaded firearm here in the building, but uh, the gun is on safe. We're pointed back toward the hill. So even if it went off, it's just gonna... Nobody would be injured. This is where snap caps would come in handy. that one went in seems like it takes a little bit of effort to get them to uh, feed up in there so our shell stops catching all of our rounds so there's our I think it's four if I ain't mistaken yeah it's four so we're just gonna manually rack our slide so work there Work there. Work there. So there was no double feeds. It was doing that. Just when I would load it up and just cycle it by hand, it was double feed. So hopefully that issue is resolved and hopefully polishing the chamber well, that first one's always hard to make go up in there. Well, I keep dropping it. So, there's our five in there. Guys, it's doing that because I just ain't, I ain't, I ain't ejecting them hard enough. I'm trying to. So it is ejecting them all. 
I've had no double feed yet. What what could cause that gun to hang up like that? You know, it has a rough chamber. Uh, has a burr in it or something. So, well, if it wasn't pouring the rain, we would definitely take this out there and see if it would put these through it without hanging up. So. I keep throwing shotgun shells Well guys, hopefully I fix this gun. Now, <laughs> should I send it back or not? I mean, it does have a slightly canted front sight. Like I said, that's not a, it's not so bad that it would be a deal breaker for me if the gun functions properly. Uh, I like the gun, but, uh, well, let's shoot it and see how it does before we make any judgments. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I don't know how good this video will be because I was kind of all over the place with the camera. Uh, it may never get posted, so, uh, if it don't, then, uh, guess you'll never miss it. <laughs> Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And until the next video, we'll see you later.